On your second or maybe third or maybe first calculus test, you're definitely going to have to find maximum and minimum values of a function. I drew a graph here. So where would you say the maximum and minimum values are on this function? Well, basically it's all of these points where the graph turns around, right? Like up here, like the top of a hill or down here, like a trough. So all of these things where the graph turns around, those are maximums or minimum values of the function. I think that's pretty easy to see. And you classify these things. So this one that I've filled in right here, this one's the highest max point anywhere on the graph, right? It doesn't really have a maximum this way because it goes up forever, and it doesn't really have a minimum this way because it goes down forever. Since this is the highest point, it's the biggest maximum, we call that a global max, or uh, it might also be called an absolute maximum. Likewise, this one would be called a global min or uh, an absolute min. Well, if these things are global, these things are local. So if you have a minimum, that, a point where it turns around, but it's not the lowest, it's a local max or a min. So these two things would be called local maximum or minimum. I should also note that your professor might call these extrema or extreme values. Okay, that's just a fancy way of saying max or min. Now that you know how to classify these things, how do you find them? Let's think about what you've learned in terms of derivatives. So up until this point, you now know that the derivative gives you the slope of the tangent line. And I'll just call that slope m. So for any x value you want to plug in. So if I wanted the slope right here, I could take the derivative and plug in whatever x value and it give me a that slope. Or if I wanted it here, I could find this tangent line. Well, what would the slope of the tangent lines be at the maximum or minimum? You see, since at the maximum or the minimum, the function's turning around. The tangent lines are level, they're horizontal. And what slope does a horizontal line have? Well, it has no slope, it has zero slope. So that's how you will find the x values that give you maximum or minimum. We'll take the derivative and we'll set them equal to zero. And those are called critical points. Critical points are where the first derivative equals zero, or the first derivative does not exist. Okay, so you'll be using critical points um, pretty often in the next few weeks. You take the derivative and you set it equal to zero. There's one other thing that I wanna mention about maximum and minimum. If you have a function on a closed bounded interval, so for example, something like this, so here's B, here's A, so I only have a piece of a function, then there will be an absolute max and an absolute min somewhere. And if it's not on the piece of the function, then it's at the endpoints. And that sort of makes sense, right? So if you cut a function, well, it has to be largest somewhere and has to be smallest somewhere. So that's a nice theorem. Let's do an example, okay? Let's find an example. So what I'm gonna do is I want to find all the maximum and minimum values of, and I'm kind of just making this up. This is my function. I want to find all of the maximum and minimum values of this function. And we know to do that, we need the first derivative. I need to take the derivative. So this is just an easy power rule. 
Uh, I'll bring down the three, subtract one from the power. The derivative of minus four X is minus four. And the derivative of a constant is zero. And I can cancel those three over threes and I'll get X squared minus four. That's our first derivative. And what do I do with the first derivative? I set it equal to zero to find the critical points. And this is a pretty easy equation to solve. Uh, you could either factor this or I'll just add four to both sides. Have X squared equals four. And if I want X, I'll square root both sides. So that means X is plus or minus two. You can't forget the plus or the minus. You will lose half of your answers. Whenever you take an even root, don't forget plus and minus. So two, and I'll, I'll really write this explicitly, minus two and two, these are our critical points, right? Critical points are where the first derivative equals zero. But that's not what I asked you. I asked you to find the maximum or minimum. So here's what we're going to do. I am going to put these on a number line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug values around those critical points into my derivative right here. So I need to basically, I need to test these three different intervals. So if I pick something less than negative two, something like negative three, and I plug that in to my derivative, I'd have negative three squared minus four. Negative three squared is positive nine minus four. So that's plus five. So I'm gonna put a plus here to know that's positive. Now I'm going to test the other intervals. So I need to pick something in between negative two and two. I can pick any number I want. Why don't I pick something easy like zero? Because if I plug in zero here, I'll have zero squared minus four. That'll just be a minus four. So I'll put a negative sign in there. I only care about the sign of this thing. My last interval, I just have to pick something bigger than two. Why don't I pick three? That'll be three squared minus four. Remember I'm plugging this into the first derivative. Three squared is nine minus four is five again, and that's plus five, so I'll put a plus there. Since derivatives give you the slope of the tangent line, before negative two, my slopes are positive. And if I have positive slopes of tangent lines, that means my function would be going up, it would be increasing. If I have negative slopes of tangent lines, that means my function would be going down or it would be decreasing. And if I have, again, positive slopes of tangent lines, that means my function's going up, it's increasing. Why do this at all? Well, this tells me if my function's going up and then down, I've got this turning point at negative two that kind of tops somewhere. It goes up and down. That means that negative two, I should say x equals negative two, is a max, is a maximum. And here, if I'm going down then up, that means my function bottoms out at two, which means that x equals two is a minimum. That's how we classify these critical points. If you actually want the maximum or the minimum values, you'll have to plug these things in. So let's see. So f of negative two, if I plug negative two in, that'll be negative two cubed over three minus four times negative two plus five. The numbers might not be nice here. I just made this problem up. Negative two cubed is negative eight over three, minus a minus is a plus eight plus five. So that's gonna be like 13 minus eight thirds. I'm not even gonna bother combining that fraction. And now if I plug in positive two, this is gonna be my minimum. That'll be positive two cubed over three, minus four times positive two plus five. 
that's going to be 8 cubed, or not 8 cubed, 2 cubed is 8, over 3 minus 8 plus 5. Let's see, that's going to be uh, minus 8 plus 5 is minus 3, so I'm going to get 8 thirds minus 3. So this thing would be my maximum value, and this thing would be my minimum value of this function. Okay, so just a quick recap. To find the critical points, you take the first derivative and you set it equal to zero. You plot those points on a line and you test the different intervals to see where the function is increasing and decreasing. That will tell you whether your points are a maximum or a minimum. And if you want the actual maximum or minimum values, you need to plug it into the original function. Okay, I hope you got something out of it. Please like and subscribe, comment, and tell me what you think, and have a great day.